This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I would bet there are some of you out there right now watching this video who are currently maintaining an older website for your photography. Maybe it's a website that you put up online a number of years ago. It looked good at the time, but today in 2025, it might be getting a little rough around the edges. Maybe it doesn't look as good on mobile. Maybe you've been wanting to do more with your website. Maybe you've been wanting to grow an audience to keep in touch with people who are fans of your work. Or maybe you've been wanting to do uh, some digital digital sales, some digital products and downloads. Well, everything I just mentioned, you can absolutely do with Squarespace by heading over to squarespace.com slash Domini. Squarespace's AI website building system is going to ask you a series of questions about what kind of website are you looking to build? What are your goals with the website? What kind of colors do you like? What typography do you like? And using its AI system, it will magically put everything together and it will build the foundation of a new website for you, which you can immediately jump in and start editing with your own content. And it's super easy and straightforward to do. I use Squarespace for my own photography. So if you would like to test out Squarespace for yourself, and build a new website, give it a try by heading over to squarespace.com slash Domini. And then whenever you're ready to go live, use my last name as the coupon code. Put my last name in there, Domini, to knock 10% off a new website or domain. Whenever we open and begin editing a digital raw image in our photo editing application of choice, that image always appears flat and gray and rather lifeless, right? I mean, it needs a little bit of a little bit of help. One of the more challenging aspects of that process is adding saturation. Something you may notice is that when you increase saturation, you just like crank it up just like I did here. Colors are not only getting richer, but those colors are also getting brighter. This is one of the funny things about working in the RGB color space. RGB is an additive color space as opposed to the subtractive color space of the print and painting world, the analog world. And so this is why when we push up that saturation slider here in Lightroom, why we get these colors that not only look richer, you know, which I think is probably what most of us want, but they also start to look a little bit fluorescent. They start to look a little bit weird. <laughs> they start to look rather unnatural. So what can we do about this? Well, you'll oftentimes hear people say in other photo editing videos, you'll hear people say that vibrance is better than saturation. You should be using vibrance instead, which is the slider just above saturation here. And vibrance is effectively a slightly smarter version of the saturation slider. It's a little more intelligent by focusing its effect on the pixels in the image which have low to medium levels of saturation. And it mostly ignores pixels which are already well saturated, which is different than the saturation slider, which just applies a blanket adjustment to every single pixel in the image. Vibrance has the exact same behavior that saturation does. When you increase vibrance and you add saturation to an image using it, you are going to make the pixels in your image brighter. The better tool, the better solution, if you are doing color editing like this in Lightroom or Camera Raw for that matter, is to use the color mixer panel down here. This gives you far more nuanced control over the colors in your image. Now, you basically have a choice here. You can either, I mean, if you really want to, you can just ignore vibrance and saturation up at the top all together and come down here and do all of your saturation adjustments on a hue by hue basis. Another way is to use vibrance and saturation to establish a baseline, to basically raise the floor, to bring the saturation levels of the image up and then use the color mixer panel to chisel away at that to subtract colors which have been lifted by those adjustments essentially you know just add a little bit of fine tuning to it so i'm going to bring that vibrance adjustment back we're going to pump it all the way up now there are basically two approaches to this image that i see there are two options here one you could say well I like having the blue and the orange because it creates more visual separation in the image. It creates a more exciting and interesting image, you know, to look at. And creatively, if that's what you're going for, then great. I mean, you can do that. Or you could tone down the blues in order to put more emphasis on the subject, put more emphasis in the areas and around the colors that you want to draw more attention as opposed to those blue colors. All right, first approach here, we're going to keep the blues in the image. Uh, but we're going to modify their appearance so they don't look quite so fluorescent, quite so unnatural. And I'm going to desaturate the blues, just pull some of that saturation out uh, that was created with the vibrance tool above. 
going to pull out aqua as well, just to make sure there's, you know, a nice roll off between those hues and we don't get any, you know, weird banding in them or anything like that. And then I'm also going to pull down their luminance. Whenever you add saturation to a hue, it also gets brighter. And so by decreasing the luminance, we are effectively counteracting that behavior of the RGB color mode. So we end up with a blue that is a little less saturated and a little bit darker than it was before. So that is with the original vibrance adjustment there. And let me just zoom into this area. I think this is the area my eyes keep going to. That is with the vibrance adjustment by itself. And that is with vibrance plus the color mixer uh, change that I just made. That's before and that's after. Sometimes uh, the hue itself can shift. It can change. Sometimes it can get like my blue here could get like just a little bit magenta or it could get a little bit green or it may start pushing in one way, one direction or another. And that's another peculiarity of the RGB color mode because everything is interconnected with one another. You change one thing and another thing ends up going in a different direction. And this is part of the reason why I think a lot of times we find ourselves moving around a lot in the develop panel. Like we go down here, we change to this and we're like, oh crap, now I need to go back up. I need to change that thing. That's why, because in RGB, everything is all kind of interconnected together. So for example, with this image here and with these blues, I can make a slight adjustment to these blues if I felt like these were maybe a little green, like a little too cyan and I want them to look uh, maybe a little bit warmer, inject just a little bit of red in there in order to help uh, get the blues back into a good place again. You know, very small little adjustment there just to, you know, get the hue in a better place than it was before. So that is a pretty, you know, simple, straightforward way of keeping the blues. And again, that's the uh, original vibrance there. And that's with the uh, changes that I made. Just subtle, not a very big change. Uh, but it does help calm those blues down a little bit. Now, let's say that we don't like the blues. Let's say that we want to remove the blues from the image altogether, and we'd rather not have them in order to create more visual interest in the subject. Because remember, you know, whatever's bright, whatever's noticeable, whatever is colorful in your image is going to attract attention. If you think about the colors in your image as a compositional guide, as something that helps direct your viewer's eye, well, you want to, you know, bring down the areas which aren't particularly important, which are like secondary actors in your in your play, for example. And you want to emphasize the colors and strengthen the colors in your primary and your lead actor. In other words, it's kind of another way to think of it. All right, so let's do that. So again, in the color mixer, uh, we still have the same vibrance adjustment. Yes, we do. This time I'm going to pull the saturation of the blues even further down. I'm going to pull aqua down. The shadows in this image, the shadows in this image, the reason why they have blue is because they are being filled with the secondary ambient light from the sky. They're not being illuminated by the sun which is, you know, what is illuminating the side of this rock here. Rather, they're being illuminated by that blue ambient light in the air that is filling those uh, those uh, indirect light areas in those shadows. I know I've done this before. You know, some of you may have as well. Something important to remember, especially in landscape photography, is that very rarely is something in the natural world like completely neutral. It's always going to have a little bit of a cast to it. It's always going to have a little bit of color. I remember I met someone one time who worked for a um, for a skiing magazine and they edited photos for like a skiing magazine and they were telling me about how uh, photographers would always submit images where the snow was like totally neutral in the image. Like it was just pure white, right? Which seems to make sense logically. Like you would think that makes sense, but she would always have to go back to them and say like, no, like <laughs> snow is not pure white. Like it either needs to be a little bit cool or it needs to be a little bit warm. You still want some amount of color in those areas. You don't want to just suck all the saturation out of them. Now the oranges and the yellows, like in this rock here, they're starting to stand out more because we're pulling that blue saturation out. And now I'm going to do something a little bit different. In order to give this image a slightly more airy look and to reduce some of the contrast in the image, I'm going to push up the luminance of the blues. And it's going to further neutralize that blue and just give everything a slightly more airy kind of look. And it's also simplifying the color palette of the image. Because you'll notice now, 
with this version, the C stack in the middle and this rock here, like they really stand out now. Like, you know, now they're really starting to jump out and more attention is landing there as opposed to, let's go back and look at the Vibrance version, as opposed to this version here, where, you know, yes, the blues are adding something. They are bringing more color contrast, which, you know, could be nice with the kind of image that you're editing. But, you know, this is another approach. So let's keep going here. Something that I've been noticing this whole time, something that's been really been bothering me, is the orange and yellow on this C stack here. See how kind of greenish it looks? And it, um, you know, I think some of that is natural. I think some of that is just, you know, probably some algae, something like that. But I want them to lean just a little further away from green. So again, I'm gonna come over here to the color mixer panel and I'm going to push the orange to the left in order to push it further away from green. Going to do the same with yellow, probably not quite as much. And then I can also bend red a little bit in the other way, a little bit further towards orange in order to create more harmony, in order to create better a better blend between the warmer hues in the image. So let's take a look at this rock here. That's the before and that's the after. So they're definitely getting stronger and look how much nicer the blues in here look, like especially some of these like whites, you know, down in here. That's the before and that's the after. So it's cleaning up the color. Now I could, if I wanted to come over here to luminance and I could pull down the luminance of these yellows a little bit if I felt like they were, you know, leaning just a little too bright, if they were a little too hot. I could uh, take some of that luminance out and I could also add a little bit of saturation if I wanted to strengthen them just a little bit. I don't need to push this too much. That is, again, that's where we started with that just blanket vibrance adjustment across everything. And that is where we are now. Now, something else to be mindful of when you are editing saturation and you are adjusting the colors in your image, you know, we as human beings, when we're out there in the real world, when we're looking at a scene, we see color mostly in and around the midtones of the environment. And I put together a little illustration here to, to make this point. But generally speaking, what happens is that the brighter light gets, the less color and saturation we are able to perceive in those areas. As a matter of fact, we have a difficult time just seeing you know variations in tonality. We have a hard time seeing detail and texture in those areas because our eyes aren't as sophisticated as a camera is when it comes to those bright, bright highlights in an image. If you've ever taken a raw image and you had like some nice, bright, kind of ambient glowing light that you were able to see with your eyes and then you get back and those highlights and whites look rather clinical and kind of you know kind of boring that's part of the reason it's because cameras have become exceptionally good at capturing the like you know the dynamic range of our of the highlights in a scene whereas our eyes tend to you know bloom them out a little bit and i think that's part of the reason why photographers like to add a little bit of glow a little bit of an orton effect sometimes to their highlights in order to better mimic and emulate how we see and perceive uh, bright values out there in the in the real world. Now, the same thing happens with the blacks. And when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, black is the absence of light. And if we don't have light, well, we don't have color. Like you need light. You need light to be bouncing and reflecting off of something in order for us to see color in those areas. So if you have like, you know, really dark values, like really dark shadows in your image, it's going to look kind of weird if you have some, you know, some richly saturated colors in those places. In other words, don't do something like this. Don't come down here to your color grading panel and start adding orange into your highlights like that and start, you know, pushing blues into your shadows. I mean, you know, <sighs> Yeah, it, art is a subjective thing, but if this if this is what you're going for creatively, great. But I'm just telling you from my perspective that it looks painted on. It, it looks a little bit strange, even though, you know, your heart was in the right place and you were thinking, well, you know, I'm creating sophisticated color contrast in my image by pushing oranges into my highlights and blues into my shadows and, you know, creating some separation in the image. And yes, you know, that can be helpful with certain images, but definitely not with this one. All right, so again, let's go back here, take a look. That is with the vibrance adjustment. <laughs> wow, it's really crazy when your eyes adjust to something and then you go back and look at an earlier version, you're like, woof, that's, that's even worse than I remember. That is the um, with the vibrance adjustment and that's with the changes uh, that I've made so far. Now, obviously there is plenty more that could be done to this image. We could just, you know, keep going and going and going with this, but hopefully this video gave you some insight into how color saturation works 
the reason why saturation can sometimes get out of control. And you may be wondering, why does my image look so terrible? Like, I just want to add some color to it. I just want to bring the colors out. Well, what I demonstrated here in this video could be part of the reason why. All right, so key takeaways here, key things to remember when you are editing saturation and color in Lightroom, just to recap everything here for you. Uh, try and avoid adding global saturation. That global saturation slider is pretty rough. You're going to get pretty harsh results out of it. Vibrance is a good secondary option, but just keep in mind that vibrance has the same effect. It's going to make your colors brighter, more luminous, perhaps even more pastel. And if you're going to use vibrance, you're probably going to need to go down there into the color mixer panel and make some fine tuning adjustments and help offset some of that effect that vibrance is creating. Or you could just, you know, leave vibrance leave saturation alone and just go down into color mixer and make all of your adjustments there. Another thing to keep in mind when you add contrast to an image in Lightroom, like let's say that's the first thing you go in and do, whenever you add contrast to an image, because again, everything in RGB is all connected to one another. Whenever you add contrast to an image, colors are going to be affected as well. So don't be surprised if after you add contrast, colors start getting muddy, they start getting you know, like really rich and bright and all that kind of stuff, and they start looking a little bit weird. Try and think in your brain of you know contrast and color as being two separate things. So you can add a contrast adjustment and uh, maybe even go into that black and white editing mode just to ignore color for a bit and just focus on tonality. Get the contrast right, get your tonal values right, and then go and make further fine tuning uh, adjustments to your color thereafter using Color Mixer. Keep an eye on your highlights and your shadows if you want your image to maintain some sense of realism and you're not going for something wildly creative. Just make sure you aren't adding too much color, you aren't toning your shadows and your highlights too much. And actually something else I forgot to mention about shadows is that we typically perceive shadows as being cool and highlights as being warm. It's just something our eyes automatically do. So a lot of times, and this is another reason why you don't oftentimes need to be toning your your shadows and your highlights too much because the, your eyes, the viewer's eyes are going to naturally perceive them as being cooler uh, than they may be from like a quantified, you know, technical perspective. So you don't need to be shoving a bunch of blue into your shadows, you know, to make them cool because your eyes are going to be naturally perceiving them to be cooler than they actually are anyway. And then finally, remember that anytime you add additional saturation to a color, you may need to offset that saturation bump with some negative luminance in order to help offset that behavior we've been talking about throughout this whole video of RGB making your colors brighter when they get more saturated. By the way, for those of you who use Photoshop, I am going to be following up this video with another video on this same topic. And I'm going to demonstrate for you ways in which you can adjust the hues, the saturation and the luminance of your colors using that app. There are actually more tools, more options there to be um, to be taking advantage of than what we have available to us in Lightroom. It's definitely a little more sophisticated, a little more nuanced. So if you're interested to see that, remember to subscribe to this channel and you might want to click that notification bell down below as well to make sure that you're notified whenever a new video goes live here on my channel. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment and give this video a thumbs up down below. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and I will see you next time.